Okay, this lesson is our fifth and final on how to build the strong form verb chart of the perfect state in both its singular and plural forms. The first lesson we learned how to write the categories and then on the left side we wrote the number and then we showed how they were inflected by person and gender. So first, second, or third, masculine, feminine, or common. So that's what we did. The second lesson we did, we begun to fill out the root word, which you notice there would be 63 squares up here. So that if you wrote those three letters of the word root word katal, you would be able to iterate that in practice. We noticed the simple active cal and the simple passive nifal were distinguished only by the n and nifal. We noticed cal, pl, and puel, the two intensive stems here, active and passive, that prior to punctuation uh, looked exactly the same. Now that's good news because we would like to find as many similarities and patterns. So if you notice, if we had begun with the board as it is now punctuated, some people would panic. But that doggish forte, the strong doggish, we notice in the middle of tet here, the uh, ninth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, that it's strong because it has a grammatical implication. This is a weak doggish, a doggish laney or doggish lazy, I like to call it to help me remember. It only is there for sound to notice the difference between a hard and soft pronunciation. This Sephardic pronunciation doesn't distinguish between some of these. It's good and it helps as you look at this and we'll go over this in another lesson which won't have anything to do with this strong chart. This will be the last lesson on this, just to show you how to build it. And as our professor, Dr. Murray, taught us, don't let what you don't know throw you from what you do know. And as I apply it, don't allow what we don't know to throw us from what we can know. So here's a chart. You can get copies of these. Uh, I'll indicate on the description where I ordered my charts from. But they're so abundant now, you can probably just print you one off. I use the large ones so that I can have them in a room and I can be teaching and point to that and help others. So uh, back away for a minute, let's look at some patterns. What can we see here? Well, we have uh, the distinction here. So we have katal, katela, katal, ta, katal, ti, katal, ti. So there's our a, ta, ti, ti, u, tim, tin, nu. So that's repeating, thankfully. And if you notice something missing, that's good because it means you know enough to notice it. And that's, there we go. Now we noticed that there were signs up here. The H in English for this he feel told us to put this H in English is a hey. So we can see heek teal, heek teal la. Notice that E sign, E sound, eel, eel, teal teal, then we have here because of the punctuation and the grammar rules, which we'll get to that later. We now have tick, tau, ta, I mean, hick, tau, ta, hick, tau, te, hick, tau, ti. But notice that's also a pattern. We have hock for ha foul. That's good news. So we have, and that's why I say to distinguish between those sounds, a comets and a pytha helps you remember if it's ha foul, causal passive or causal hifil, causal active. So you notice this all starts with hock, hock, just as in hof, hock, 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 all the way down. Our endings are the same. So if you have a stumble, let it be in your vowel, your, your vowels, keep that separate. Build your chart as we've learned to do in these five lessons. Then in this final lesson, punctuate your chart and then look for patterns. So as we come across here, let's just start here. We'll notice we have ka tau t, nick tau t, keet tau t, coot tau t, and I again uh, omitted here, and that's okay. And uh, let me see, uh, that's ta, coot tau, ta, coot tau, t, half sound. So when you forget, as I just did in real time and wouldn't have noticed it until I wanted to come across and show you the patterns, because remember, our chart can help us in many ways. If we 
notice patterns. Look at this. This how these are all in this in this middle radical. Notice the punctuation beneath tet there. It's all the same. Remember our intensive had the double middle radical. Here we have thankfully the sign hith. So we have hith all the way down, very consistent. We have our endings. Ah ta ti half sound ha ta a ta ti ti u tim tin nu again uh, as seems to be the case today i'm forgetting just like i do in class when i teach it but someone pointed out that they couldn't notice if they forgot something so i'll be here to patch this up for example uh, hick tau hick tau nu there we go yeah hick tau nu hock Tau new. Notice the heek goes with he feel, the hoff, the hock hoff goes with that. So that's good news. So you come across the bottom, we can notice a pattern as well. We can notice this lenu, 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 lenu. So if we study carefully, we'll see patterns here emerge. The double middle rattle, rat, double middle, the double middle radical in the intensive stems. Hith pa'el is a dead giveaway because it has this hith on the beginning, and that's good news. That's a clue for us to not be thrown by this. When we look at these, uh, this, these rows, not columns, but these rows, you'll notice a pattern all the way across. Here, for example, ka tila, nik tila, kit tila, kut tila. Remember, it doubles, so you have two tets there. Hith kat tila, hik Tila, that he feel. Hawk, tila, notice tila, 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 tila. So that's good news. And don't be thrown by it. Uh, practice it, iterate it, rewrite it. Do as Dr. Murray said, uh, your homework. <laughs> and uh, it was always good for us to have done our homework prior to entering class because when we arrived at class, then as we collaborated, as we do here at imcornet.org in this Cornet Project class, we're, we're, we're stressing and encouraging and supporting collaborative reasoning through a collective learning process. So yes, our errors, our fallible elements, things that we uh, presume will emerge surface and we can remove it like dross and we expect that from each other. Uh, iron sharpens iron and uh, we want to improve our knowledge of the scriptures and learning the design of the language, the intelligent design of it, learning that there are patterns and that we can use this. And as Dr. Murray encouraged us, learn to use it first and begin to use it as soon as possible. Blueletterbible.org for uh, English readers to immediately use Greek and Hebrew because it has strong numbers. It has declensions for nouns, it has conjugations for verbs, it parses those, but you can go there and look at and use things you know, numbers and English. So then you can begin to interact. And then as you're learning, as most of you already have your Corne Greek alphabet, and you notice much of our vocabulary is Greek, according to Greek anyway, auto, automobile, uh, crystallize, that's a transliteral word, baptize, baptize is a Greek word transliterated, Timotheus, Timothy, Paul, Palos. So we have so many words that we already speak in Greek so that when we come to this, it can look daunting. And if you started here, uh, this is where a lot of people just stepped off the train and would rather <laughs> tumble and move on to something else. But way, the way we did it, you go back to video one, two, three, and four, and now end with five, you'll notice these and study your alphabet, then study your punctuation. And I'm saying end with punctuation because when you write this out and you place your consonants here without vowels and you notice that you have a noon as a sign of the active passive or simple passive, you have a hith here for the sign of the intensive reflexive. You have a hay here for the sign of your causal. And you have your endings that are the same. You've already made quite, uh, a, a, well, a large amount of progress toward looking at the things that can give you indicators. Because you don't want to just codepend upon your vowel pointings. 
because they will be very different. It's a very idiomatic language. So when you arrive to your actual Hebrew Bible, uh, you'll want to come back to this strong form because at least it's strong, it's consistent, it's repeatable. And then, of course, I will make videos in the future based on verb charts that were handmade by our professor, Dr. Murray, where he would take a different kind of verb and he would conjugate it for us. So I'll place those charts up here because those are very uh, useful in showing you how different words are inflected differently according to this strong form. So let me back out of the way. Uh, just don't uh, back away. My, if you want to have some fun, sometimes write this up on a board, leave it somewhere in a hallway where people might walk by or place it in a classroom at your church house and, and someone walk by, they'll just be staggered by it because they'll really think, oh my, what is that? And one funny thing is I had something like this on a board once and someone came in and erased it and they were horrified because they assumed it must have been so complicated. I said, oh no, I, I built it so I can rewrite it. And I've had it on butcher paper where I had it almost surrounded a room where I'd have the uh, perfect state, which is this. And then I'd have the imperfect state and I just had it all around the room. But it was helpful to students to be able to see the patterns when you look horizontally, when you look vertically, when you let everything on the board prompt you, uh, look for the patterns first, and that way your approach to it, you won't be so averse and it won't be, uh, well, it won't uh, repel you. It will draw you and compel you. So have a blessed day and continue to study, uh, iterate, get to where you can build your chart. Uh, there's some accents that aren't up here. I'll get to that later, but we'll do a lesson just on vowels and that'll be separate. But this is how you build this chart. So have a blessed day and continue to study. Read it, write it, iterate, and deliberately practice.